In Next.js, there's many strategies you can use to fetch data, including server-side rendering, static site generation, client-side rendering, and incremental static regeneration. This tutorial will compare client-side fetching, server-side rendering, and static site generation. Start is client-side rendering, and this is similar to how a React app would work. In client-side rendering for Next.js, Next.js will compile the HTML pages to a simple loading indicator. Then it will use the client-side JavaScript to fetch the data and then show the data. To implement this in Next.js, we're going to create two state variables. The first is data and sets data using our useState hook, and we're going to add the type of post to it. And the next state will be our isLoading and setLoading state. Now we will use the React use effect hook to fetch our data. Inside of our use effect hook is where we can fetch the data. And we're going to be fetching data from the JSON placeholder API. So we'll add that URL in there and we're going to be getting the first post. Now because we can't use promises inside of a use effect hook, we're going to add our dot then subscription to it and we'll convert that response to JSON. Then we're going to use the set data to the parameter that's been passed to it and we're also gonna set loading to false. One last thing is because this API is rather fast, we're gonna add a delay to it to help better illustrate to show when it's loading and when the data has been retrieved. So we'll create our custom delay function on top of the component, and then we will call that function at the beginning of our subscription. Now this function will return the HTML, and it'll be checking if it's loading, and if so, it'll return a loading text. Otherwise, it will return the JSON stringified of data. If you run this code in your browser, you'll see it'll show loading for a few seconds, and then it will display the post JSON data. This approach to fetching data is less costly as server-side rendering, as you don't have to pay for the server fetching your data, and it is faster time to first byte as well. However, the one downside to this is your SEO performance won't be as good as server-side rendering as the page is rendering first the static loading indicator before showing your data. Next, we have server-side rendering. Next.js will use server-side rendering to fetch your data, and then it will return the HTML with the data already filled in. So here we can create our custom server-side rendering component, and then server-side rendering in Next.js uses another function called get server side props and we can add the get server side props typing to that function as well. In this function is where we can make our request to fetch the post and then we'll return the post inside of our props. It's worth noting that you can use the context parameter passed in to get things such as the URL path and query parameters as well. So every time someone hits this web page, the Next.js server will call the get server side props that will run on the back end which will then pass in our post to our component above. So this component is a simple component which takes in the post and the props, and it simply will be returning the post. Notice there is no loading indicator needed here as the data is already pre-filled out. If you view the page in your browser, it'll automatically load the data with no loading. This approach to fetching data is good for things that you need good SEO performance on, but the downside is it is more expensive as you have to run the function on the back end instead of it running on the client's device. And your time to first byte is longer as the function has to run before returning the HTML page. Next is static page rendering. In Next.js, static page rendering works by rendering the page once at build time and then it will return that statically cached page every time a user runs the request. This differs from get server side props because get server side props will run every single time that the web page is hit, whereas static side rendering returns the same results every time. Code wise, the only change you would have to do is change the name of the function from get server side props to get static props. All the other code can remain the same. Get static side props is good for data that won't change frequently, but is tedious to write manually in your code. For example, on my website, DevInfluence, I use the getStaticProps function to show the popular posts in my web page, as this data won't change frequently, but is tedious to encode manually on my website. Hopefully you found this video helpful for you as you decide which data fetching method to do. And if so, please like and subscribe so I'll be posting more videos like this in the future.